Let's look at some practical decisions you need to make on a typical instrument departure. We're at Papa 5-2, Cottonwood, Arizona. The Weathers IFR will be doing the Minji 1 departure to get out of here on our way down to Scottsdale just to our south. Let's use the Jeppesen charts to get some familiarity with using what most of the pros use. We can use either runway for this departure. The wind, as you can see from the windsock in front of us, is calm. This is a non-towered field, so we can, traffic permitting, take off on whichever runway we like. Which one should we take? Let's look at the takeoff minimums. Even though Part 91 isn't legally required to follow takeoff minimums, we're going to adhere to them for safety's sake. Runway 14 requires 300 foot ceilings with at least a mile and a half of visibility. If we have that, we can do the standard 200 foot per nautical mile climb out. If we don't have that, but have at least standard takeoff minimums, which is a mile of visibility, we need to climb at at least 225 feet per nautical mile until reaching 3,900. So the steepest we'd need to climb on this runway is 225 feet per nautical mile. On runway 32, regardless of the weather, we need to do a steeper 310 foot per nautical mile climb. And we need to maintain it for longer, until 6,000 feet where the air is thinner and performance degrades. Our Cessna has a VY of 75 knots. The handy chart tells us we'd need 388 feet per minute to climb for the steeper angle. We should be able to do that on takeoff. But can we maintain it through 6,000 feet? Let's play it safe and take off on runway 14. Now, the procedure itself is pretty similar for both runways. It's runway heading, and then at 4,100 feet, we turn direct to Minji. We need to cross Minji at or above 10,000 feet before proceeding on course. In our case, on course is proceeding south from Minji along a Victor Airway, which has an MEA of 12,000 feet, so that's our cruise altitude. So we're cleared on our route via the Minji 1 departure to climb to 12,000. We taxi to runway 14 and set ourselves up for departure. We hold 145 on the heading until 4100 feet when we make the left turn direct to Minji. As we get up to 6000 feet, our climb rate stays pretty good. We only need the standard 200 feet per nautical mile here. What if we'd use runway 32, which required a higher gradient through 6000? Our airspeed is 75, but have a look at the GPS readout for ground speed. Due to the higher true airspeed up here and the slight tailwind, our ground speed is fast, closer to 100 knots. The chart says we need 517 feet per minute to hold that angle, which we're barely keeping up with, so it was a good decision to use the shallower gradient of runway 14. We're approaching Minji. What do we do when we get there? We need to cross Minji at or above 10,000 before proceeding on course. If we cross below that, we need to hold as depicted. Are we going to make it? We can cheat a bit using our autopilot and GPS. Right now, we have 12,000 feet as our bugged altitude, and the selected altitude arc on the MFD shows where we'll be when we get there, past Minji. But we only need to cross at 10,000. Let's key that in and then see where the arc is. It shows that we'll be getting there before reaching Minji. That means that after we cross Minji, we can turn southbound on course. But Let's say we didn't have the climb performance we currently have. We'll bring the power back to demonstrate. We get to Minji and we're still below 10,000. We're going to enter the hold using a teardrop entry. It's a long 7 mile leg on the hold. Plenty of time to get to 10,000. We keep climbing to our filed 12,000, but we do not turn on course yet. We stay in the hold because we need to cross Minji at or above 10,000. As we turn inbound, we're still climbing for 12,000, but we're okay once we pass Minji to turn on course. However, ATC will step in and give us an instruction at this point to turn left and intercept the airway in our filed route and resume our own navigation. This is what realistically happens in departure procedures like this one, where as soon as ATC has you above their minimum IFR altitude, they'll turn you on course and out of the loop here. That's a bit of the practical decision making you'll do in a departure procedure. For more instrument training, check out Flight Insight IFR Ground School today at the link here or in the description below.